It's Mark Gabor. As you recall last time, we downloaded some General Motors stock data. In reviewing that data, I had downloaded from April 1, 2014 to October 30th, 2015. I had only wanted six months previous to October. So I trimmed the data so that I only have now one April 15 to the 30th of October 2015. As you recall, I moved the October data from the column over here. So I have 128 data points. And I'm going to try to use that to predict the stock for October. Now I don't want to use the October data or else I'd get a pr prediction. And that's not the point. I'm trying to pretend it's the end of September. I'm trying to predict October. So let's see how that works. So let's take this data. And let's uh, highlight it all. 128 data points, x, y, the x, the independent variable will be the date, and the y will be the closing stock price of General Motors, and let's see what we can do. Let's first of all always look at a scatter plot. So I want to look at scatter plot of this data. There we go. It's got the date along the bottom and it's got the closing price across the top and you can see it's kind of decreasing. It looks like it should be a good model. I don't know. It started off 36-ish and it's ending around 30, around 30-ish. 30 but let's see what the model looks like. The easiest way to get the regression line for this is to use, you know, go to the quick layout and pick the FX version and it gives you the regression line and it says the stock price is driving dropping minus the the, the slope is minus 0.047 so it's the stock price is dropping on average of 4.7 cents a day and the intercept is 2020 which means if I go all the way back to the year zero, uh, the stock would have been $2,020, which doesn't make sense because the company didn't even exist then. So what I want to do is I want to delete this or just move it up because the way I drew it was way at the bottom. And I want to have it up here. So if I want to go down here and put date, date, I go over here and I put closing price. And my chart title would be GM4115 to 9.30. Remember, we're pretending it's September 30th. So I got this. So let's use this to make a prediction. See how it works. Notice that I, from the previous one, I have a column called forecast, absolute error, error squared, and percent error. So let me go over here and create the forecast. What is a forecast? Well, it takes the date and it multiplies it, and maybe it's better to do the multiplication first. We have minus 0 0.0471, 0 0.0471. Remember, that's a slope, and a stock is dropping 4.7 cents every day on average, and I'm multiplying that times the date. Now, remember, the date is in Julian date. So we'll use this in the calculation, plus my intercept, which is 2020.5. And if I hit enter, it gives me 29.21 as my forecast. That's really cool. So it goes, I go all the way down. And while it looked pretty good at the beginning, you could see that it keeps going down four cents every day, even though the stock price was headed down, then it went up. Stock prices do that. We know that. 
So what's the absolute error? Notice if I just take the regular error, which is forecast minus actual, I get positives and negatives. And if I add all those up, you see the uh, sum is mostly negative. But I want to know the actual error. I want to know the absolute value of the error. ABS of a forecast minus the actual. And I calculate it all the way down. See, it starts getting pretty big. The square error is I take the absolute value and I just square it. And if I take the percent error, that's going to be the absolute error divided by the actual close. So I take the absolute error, divide by the actual close, and it tells me my percent, 4.8%. Now, I had previously formatted some of these cells, so you may have to reformat it. Uh, for example, the ABS or the forecast might come out as a date. You have to go up here and just press this uh, comma to turn it into an accounting date, which gives you two decimal places. There we go. Now I want to calculate the average error. So I use the average function. And I basically take this whole column. And I get an average. And for some reason, it copied it over, even though I didn't mean it to. And the percentage one should be a percentage again. And let's take it to three decimal places. And this is my mean absolute deviation. This is my mean squared error. And this is my mean absolute percent error, or MAPE. Now, I could highlight these you know I can make this one yellow I can make this one orange why do I do that just so it sticks out a little bit and what can I make this one I can make this one uh, let's make it greenish there's my three errors so if I use September April 1 through September 30th data to predict the October stock price, actual closing price of General Motors stock using a regression model. It gives me this regression model and it gives me this graph and if I get an absolute error of, I'm off by an average of five dollars, mean squared error is 29.95 and a mean absolute percent error is 15.2 percent error. So if, if you're happy with being in 15.2 on the average for the whole month, you can see it starts off low and it gets progressively higher. It's probably not the best model in the world, but I even have an R squared. Of what? 0.8254. Five, five rounds off to. So I have 82.55% of the variability in a General Motors closing price is being explained by this model historically. So I'm assuming that's going to continue going forth. And the R value, the Pearson correlation coefficient, which tells me how good the fit is, is the square root. And notice that the slope is negative, so it's going to be the negative square root of the R squared or 90%. It's a really good linear fit. But I'm not sure that I would want to gamble and be off by 15% on a stock price. That could it's not really the best thing to have. So maybe instead of, let's look at the data here, the historical data. We looked at the picture and maybe if I just used, if I use September data, would I be better off? Only because it's 28 to 30. So I don't know, it's going to be very flat. And 
I'm not sure what my data is going to do after that. So if I just use just one month of data instead of six months, maybe I can get a better reading. Should we try it? Okay, let's try it. So now I go down here. And let's say I use the September data. And I say insert. scatter diagram. Well, it's going to be, it peaks out, so the, the line, I don't know if we're guessing, it looks like it's going to go through here, but we don't have to guess. We can go to this FX, and it's going slightly up, even though I think the GM stock price, I can't remember if it went slightly up or down, it's going up 1.3 cents a day, but it only has an R squared of uh, 2% because it's, you know, there's a lot more variation in the data. So let's uh, move this up. And let's put this data right below here. So we've got our model. I can change the data. This titles again. Date. Closing price. And what can we make? Make the title. GM, oh, this is 9 1, 15, 2, 9, 30, 15. Okay. Now, one thing that I like to do, let's go up to the top here. And let's copy this whole thing. Copy the whole thing. Where do I want to put that now? Let me put it right down here. So I'm doing the same thing, except I'm going to use this data. Well, what has changed? The formula has changed. So instead of the forecast being minus 0.0471, it's going to be 0.013, so it's going, instead of down 4.7 cents, it's going up 0.013 cents. And instead of 2025, it's going to be 521.25. That wasn't good. Must have done something wrong there. It is minus 521, sorry. Okay, so that gives us a better price. And let me just copy those all down. Now notice that it changes my MAD, my MSC, and my MAPE. So I got a little bit better. My average deviation is down 7 cents. My MAPE went from 50 to... They're essentially the same model basically pick your poison they're very close uh, I think I would go with the first one because of the R squared and the R are much higher and over the long run I think that seems to be the, the model here what happens though my R squared becomes 0.02 one seven and my Pearson correlation coefficient is now going to be positive because it's an increasing a slope, not a decreasing slope. So it only goes up to a whopping 14.73%. So 
which model do I choose? I don't know. I could 